Welcome back to my garage. It's uh, a couple of minutes since I stopped recording the previous video and I'm getting ready to cut the, the crankcases here. So I, if you're lucky you can see my markings. There's one here, here, here and here. So the idea is that this piece is going to I'm going to cut this here and this here, so this piece I will weld onto here to extend it and this will be cut here. And this one, this case will be cut here to make it one long uh, crankcase with four cylinders. Now oh, that's uh, probably easier said than done because all the distances need to be perfect or close to perfect at least. I uh, haven't really solved that <laughs> that bit yet, but uh, problems are there to be solved, I guess. I will take it as it comes. My idea here is uh, before I start building a four cylinder out of this, I'm going to uh, train my welding skills a bit by making a single cylinder out of this because this part will not be useful for anything and then this part will also not be much use so that's uh, if I join those together I can make a single cylinder I'm not going to do anything with this single cylinder but uh, fun to have on the shelf I guess then I can see how this stuff is to weld in and um, yeah just basically some training before I start doing a four cylinder. I'm sure I'll pick up something from doing that. But uh, step one is to start cutting it. I've only marked uh, the top halves of the case yet. These cases are split horizontally. I'm going to split the top and bottom halves uh, in different positions. Because there's so much studs everywhere. And I want to keep all the engine mounting studs in one piece, so the bottom, uh, the left bottom case is going to be cut here somewhere, something like that. And then the top part is going to be cut here and the bottom is uh, will be uh, here somewhere, so it's a bit offset. And then the middle part will be like this, so it won't have uh, any studs. And then, then the right the right case will have uh, four bolts again. I think that's the best way. So I'm going to start with uh, this one, the left one here. So the uh, minus side is the, the part that is going to go away. So I'm just going to cut it right on the edge of this uh, ear thingy here. Yep, let's go over to the band saw. Okay, so point of no return, here we go. Here we go, that's one part. I guess this is really no going back now. And I'm not using any oil, cutting oil, because I want to keep it as clean as possible because I, these cuts are exactly when I, where I'm going to be welding, so I don't want to uh, fill it up with oil. I'm not sure how much of that you saw because uh, my camera ran out of battery, but uh, this is the result of the cutting. Uh, lower parts. As you can see it's uh, all slightly too wide so it needs to be uh, machined to final size. And then the top parts. So they are also a bit too wide. Um, you can see here that I put the cuts a bit offset from each other to give it a bit of uh, extra strength I guess. So what I'm going to do now 
is uh, I'm going to clamp this onto my bar in the lathe, which over there. I actually cut up uh, another engine to make some nice uh, clamps. So I can just uh, clamp it on like this and then uh, turn the surface here because uh, when I'm going to weld it, uh, ideally I don't want to have any gap between the, between the parts. So this is quite an important moment really because um, of course I need to have the width exactly right otherwise the crank is not going to fit and I've been giving this a bit of thought the only machined stuff that I can measure from are these ring grooves they are in the same spot on all the all the parts and in the cylinders they need to be exactly 135 millimeters apart uh, from each other. So my idea is, first I take the middle part, machine it flat. So we know this uh, surface is uh, pretty much ready for, uh, for welding. And then I will need to clamp it onto my bar and machine this. That's going to join here. And then I can measure like this, and it should be 135 millimeters uh, plus the width of one ring. It's uh, 140.6 now, so uh, there's like the rings are like uh, 1.75 or something, so there's uh, about three millimeters to go up or four or something. Uh, probably going to use a micrometer to measure that, but there is a problem because if I clamp it onto the bar there, um, I can't reach these uh, grooves to measure. So I'm going to make a new smaller bar. Um, so I will be machining this like so. And I will uh, take some old bearings that I welded shut so they don't rotate. Put the bearings onto this shaft and then uh, clamp it onto the bearings. And that gives me access to at least uh, this one and then I can measure the distance to the, to the same groove on the next, uh, on the next bit. So I have my bearings waiting for me in the oven, they're warming up so I can uh, slide them onto this shaft here. So uh, I'm going to start out with putting a center hole in this shaft so I have something, uh, some support there. This is just an uh, aluminium shaft but it's no heavy turning here so it should be fine. So let me uh, go put a center hole in this and uh, I'll get back to you when the bearings are going on. Okay, so let me go get a bearing from the oven and uh, hopefully it will slide right on. Crap. Whatever, we'll just press them on I guess. or use the hammer <laughs> method that works too. Okay, so uh, here's the shaft. And I can just uh, clamp this down like, like that. And I have uh, access to the groove there. Something like that. Okay, so we're uh, over at the lathe now. I have my uh, my crown case bit all uh, clamped down, and I uh, will use the tailstock to stabilize it while turning here. 
I already turned this one. The size didn't really matter on this one, so I just turned it until it was uh, flat. So now when I'm going to going to measure here, I can just put it down like that, press it against it, and then measure between the grooves here. We are at uh, 144.65 now. But if we, we need to include the width of the grooves, which is 1.75 or something. So there's uh, about 11 and a half millimeters that needs to come off here. So I guess I'll start turning. Uh, it's gonna take a while because uh, I don't want to use any cutting oil on it because the, this is exactly where I need to be welding later on. So don't want to uh, put all kinds of crap in it now, right before welding. And it's a bit off balance, so uh, an interrupted cut and everything, so uh, it's not gonna go very fast. But we'll see how long it takes. Needs to be done, so. Okay, so it's straight now. I'm going to uh, do a measurement just for fun. Okay, let's call it 1.73. Got my uh, shop calculator, so I need one. 35 minus 1.73 133.27 that down here setting my calipers to 133.27 We have uh, 10 point 10 millimeters to go. At least 10 more cuts then. finished okay so I have a little over two millimeters to go I'm going to do a little sanity check here you can see here this is uh, still needs to come in a bit if I put the gasket on here like that Two millimeters looks about right. Okay, so according to this, it's exactly half a millimeter remaining. Okay, so this should be it now. More than 33.24 I'm getting here. I think that will be fine. Ah, let's do a gasket check. Looks pretty good. 
pretty good to me. All right, so let's uh, get this thing off of here. If I could find my wrench that I was just holding 10 seconds ago. There we go. Uh, maybe I got ahead of myself a little bit here. <laughs> but I just had to uh, check what it would look like. And it looks awesome. It's uh, really wide with a recoil and a clutch. It's uh, 84 centimeters. But unfortunately it uh, needs a lot of work before it's going to uh, be finished. So uh, let me get back to the other side and uh, go through the next steps. You can see uh, here and here. Maybe you can't see. Maybe I should point the camera in the right direction. Here and here. That's where the splits are. So uh, now I just need to uh, machine the, the bottom part to size. Uh, to make the head fits I had to uh, cut one flange off each one of these middle ones. And as you can see the cylinders uh, also still need to be cut. Their pins are overlapping there. But uh, yep, yeah, let's uh, continue with the with the bottom half of the crankcase. Okay, so for the bottom uh, crankcase part, I'm going to start with machining the sides because, uh, as you can see here, these are the mounting stud holes and I want to uh, keep four of them on each side so eight in total so I definitely definitely don't want to be machining into those um, and when uh, I have my measurements now so uh, after I machine these flat I will take the middle part and uh, machine that to a size for each side so I guess let's uh, Go over to the lathe and uh, start machining. I probably won't be showing it because eh, maybe I'll show a little bit of it anyway. Whatever. It's the same as before. There's been a little fuck up here. I don't have any more footage. But uh, this is gonna be the end of this video. Uh, uh, in the next part, I'm. Uh, I can actually show you a little preview here. Uh, how about that one? Anyway, um, you'll have to trust me that I have machined the bottom parts as well. Uh, and they are made to size now. So in the next one we're going to be um, Machining the, the plate here and maybe some other stuff, another plate at least. So uh, we'll see, I guess. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.